الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل على محمد كما تحب وترضى Dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you all to inspiration of Islam by greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. In our show we have, mashallah, another river brother. His name is Abdullah Tyler. And mashallah, we are grateful, I'm grateful, honored to welcome Brother Abdullah. Dear brother Abdullah, welcome to our show. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah. So you are the second person in my show, mashallah. Mm -hmm. And our inspiration by Islam is that we want to bring out the message from New River Brothers or anyone who actually got benefited by Islam. Of course, mm -hmm. Islam is a beneficial thing. So from that, people will learn and they will practice in their life. Mm -hmm. So tell me about yourself, MashaAllah. How long have you been done your Shahada? Um, Alhamdulillah. Um, I've been Muslim just approximately over eight years now. MashaAllah. Yes. May Allah bless and welcome. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Right, thank you very much for putting me on the show. Alhamdulillah. So eight years. How did? You, how was the journey coming through? Was it difficult for you to m make that decision to become Muslim? And has anyone helped you? Has anyone give you dawah? Has any any person from Islamic perspective or mm -hmm. anyone that went up to uh, up to you and said something about Islam or Quran or anything? Well, alhamdulillah. I think my, my journey was quite. Uh, yeah, different different uh, situations and different uh, events, um, different people I had to, you know, have a change in my religion where, you know, especially when it comes to my social circle, my family, my habits, uh, either the interest that I was involved with, like, you know, I was focused on other things in life rather than the true purpose. And all of this was a, you know, it was a, it was a gradual change. Some things were sudden, some things were slow. Um, but in, in regards to the Islam, not really, my, my journey, it was only a very, very a handful of Muslims I really engaged with. It was more of an individual um, journey myself, really. So it was like you were looking for it, or the message was looking for you, but not through the, uh, as we are Muslim, we're supposed to give dawah, but they didn't go to you. Mm. So in your journey, did you study other religion as well, or just you found or you took it? Mm. Um, so basically, when, when I came to is Islam about discovering it, um, you know, I grew up my whole life always believing in a creator. I thought this was, you know, as we know in the fitrah in Islam, that I always believed in my heart that there was a bigger purpose to life, that there was something out there. You know, I wasn't just here for fun and games. And, and I believed that there was a creator and there was a truth to this life. But I had full trust in that truth and whatever that was, that one day in my life that I would, I would see the reality. So I, I took every day as it was and I believed that one day I will be shown that truth. SubhanAllah. Um, so I left the trust in that, and then one day, you know, I was in I was in university. Um, I was about eighteen. Um, I was I spoke with a few Muslims, um, but they didn't give me dawah. They didn't they didn't tell me about Islam. I only know about Islam because they mentioned it, and then I was in I was intrigued about it. And I thought, what is this Islam? And I thought, you know, let me let me find out about it. And I went off my own back and my own individual journey to um, find out about Islam. And then I started to do a comparative sort of religion, uh, religion studies, where, whereby I started to look at Christianity, Judaism, all of the other uh, ways of life which claims to be a religion from the Creator. And there, were, on that on that journey, it was quite some time, maybe um, maybe under a year, uh, sort of studying. Majority of it was Islam, because um, when you start to use your heart as a, as a criteria to really see what the truth is and use your rationale and your logic. SubhanAllah. It's very easy to differentiate the falsehood from the truth. It's very easy. Um, so how did you uh, say you, you're, reading, you're reading Quran, mm. you're also reading the Bible and mm. the others. How did, you def how did you define it? Because it's quite unique. Mm. You're actually following your own s heart to... Mm. Because at the moment you don't know if it's uh, which yeah. one is divine, mm. and if it's divine, it's also mixed as well. So other we believe there is a Torah mm. and the Injil, but it's mm -hmm. also we believe it's mixed, mm -hmm. it's the original form. Mm. Now, how did you do that? So imagine, give us an example. People are watching, mm -hmm. so maybe they will learn something from that. So, the first principle that I believe in the Creator, and the next thing to establish was about that Creator, and naturally in your heart you would know that the Creator of everything that exists is not like anything you can imagine. Laysa kumithi hushe. Well, Allah says in the Quran, there's nothing like unto Allah. And you know, um, as Allah says in Surah Ikhlas, that you'd realize that there is nothing in this world which is comparable to Allah. And if you use this uh, natural belief in one's heart and you look at the other ideologies and religions, 
they don't fit that criteria. SubhanAllah. For example, Christianity, they make the claim that, that the creator of everything that exists, you know, became a man. And naturally, this wouldn't buy anyone's, anyone with a, with a sound rationale. You wouldn't, you wouldn't take this. So logically, deducting and studying and taking time to sort of uh, look at the main foundations of the beliefs of the religions, Islam is the only one that stands out. By far. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Before you took your shahada, was it difficult for you to tell your, your family, friends, and because you're going to mm. take the shahada now, uh, was it difficult for you? Did it take very long to decide to tell them, or how was it for you that that part of the with my family? Journey? Yeah. So with my family, so you know that you're going to take shahada now, yeah, right? Yeah. You will have reaction from your mm -hmm. family member, whoever's around you. Mm. It's a difficult decision to make, mm -hmm. and everything is based on your heart and your intellect mm. here now, mm. because you haven't met many Muslims before that. Mm. It's in your, you're on your, on your own in that journey, man, mm -hmm. subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. You are a fighter. Now, what was going through your head before you tell them? What was going into your head? <sighs> the thing is, I, won't, I, won't, I wasn't really scared that, you know, that my belief would, 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 would be tampered or, or change or be weakened. Because, you know, when I, when I read in the Quran where, you know, if you have trust in Allah, Allah will find you a way out. Allah There will be an ease. So you haven't had you haven't done the shahada that time, or did you? Nah. Subhanallah. Just you before shahada, time, it, was, it was more of um, studying Islam. I think it was about maybe six months in total. I sort of studied the, you know the sirah about the Quran. I read it quite in detail, and then it was a slowly, slowly you could say, building a reassurance of a full package of taking the message of the belief. Obviously, actions come later. So when I got to a point where I had to take the shahada, I took it in my heart. I had to take it in my heart because I had no Muslims to take shahada with. Subhanallah, you done it by yourself. Yeah, but Allah then Allah. eventually I went to a masjid and I did it formally, uh, of course, with someone I, I knew. Um, but then from there, of course, the next stage is to inform the people who I know and my relatives, my social circles. And then I knew without a doubt that whatever Islam prohibits me to do, the, the people who, you know, my social circles, they wouldn't take it the way I know they would take it. For example, um, uh, a lot of the shoe circles I was involved with, they were, they were engaged with a lot of, you know, entertainment, you know, weekends, you know, uh, enjoying their life in a way which is not, you know, not permissible. And, and I knew that if I was going to tell them that, you know, unfortunately I can't do this anymore for the sake of my creator, I had to see what their reaction would be. And I thought to myself, by Allah, if these people were destined for me, they would accept it and take me for who I am. And then when you tell the people that this is what I believe in and now this is my approach and unfortunately I cannot be engaged in those things, then you really start to see who are the true people in your life which will be beneficial for you. Subhanallah. And of course, uh, the Prophet Muhammad he said, if there's no good friends, having no friend is better than having bad friends. And I read this hadith and it, this founded my Otherwise foundations words. and I thought, that's true, of course, Allah is the only true friend and he's the of only course. one who's going to help you on that day. There is no other helpers but Allah. So these people, uh, so of course this was a... Before you tell in your parents, did they realize that you're changing? Because you are changing now, isn't it? In your home, you mm -hmm. live by your, everybody else, so you're changing, you probably want to pray, mm. or you probably want to make what do. Was it difficult for you? <laughs> did you have to go through any, um, I don't know what you mm. call it? How was it for you? It reminded me of the first Meccan stage of Islam, where you know where the Sahaba, they used to practice it secretly. It was like this for me. Where like, because I was at university, I didn't really get to see my parents often. But I used to go see them sometimes on a weekend or when the term breaks was there. Because this was my early stage when I became Muslim. Uh, when I went to see them, uh, gradually after every visit, I knew they were noticing a change in me. For example, you know, I, I started to, you know, instead of shave, I was growing my facial hair. or Mashallah. My, my, my taste in dress was changing. You know, my approach of what I used to wear suddenly changed. I wasn't like this, of course, straight away, but it was... Uh, so you know, what, okay, so what, what was it before then? Tell us. We'd like to know. Why not? <laughs> what was that before, and what changed? I was very, I was very. Con uh, I used to think too much about what people, you know, about my appearance. I, I like to dress, you know, f flash and lifestyle, and wow. earrings and, you know, chains. How many earrings did you had? I had two at the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One each side. But this, this was the fashion and this was what you was told was Did you have anything good in the tank? No, no, no. No, no, earrings, of no. Not. No, 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 yeah, okay. no, no. I couldn't eat. <laughs> okay. um, but you know, you know, flashy clothes, you know, designer clothing. Okay. This was the sort of thing I was engaged with. And 
And then gradually my parents started to notice that I, wouldn't, I wasn't opting for that anymore. They, they started to notice that I was just buying simpler clothes, you know, just some things were easy, not expensive. And, and I remember my mum used to ask you know, quite a lot in these things and I used to say that, you know, I used to give a vague answer. I, I don't really like it anymore. I didn't say because it wasn't because of Islam, because I didn't want to mention it at the time. And then eventually, especially when I started to get into the Salah and started praying, and um, when I was at my, my mum and my, my dad's house, I used to um, pray secretly. Uh, there was times when I had to lock the door because I was afraid that if they see me praying or doing sujood or bending over, they, you know, they're not, they don't know about this. So they, they might think, you know, what is this person doing putting his face on the floor? Because yeah, I, yeah. I know from, I've been in that perspective where if I saw that, I might think the same. So I used to keep it quite secretive and then um, it got to a point where I had no choice. You know, I couldn't, because Allah says in the Quran, I need to be good to my parents. And the only way I can be good to my parents is to tell them about Islam. Yeah. This is the best thing I could do for them. So I had to make a change in my life um, and make this decision to inform them. And Alhamdulillah, they took it very well. And my parents always gave me a trust in my life that if I ever do anything which was beneficial for me and I thought was good, they would take it uh, please me. But of course, naturally in my heart, I knew for a fact there'll be questions, you know, you know, uh, first one my dad asked, for example, I remember, you know, he's asking re relevant questions about you know, things like b the bad Muslims out there which are doing things which are not in the name of Islam. Um, so it was a lot of, it was a bit educational at first, you know, um, you're sort of debunking the um, fake messages about Islam in the media. I knew that this was going to come. I had to, you know, learn about this and sort of give them the correct message. Um, yeah, alhamdulillah. So. How was it like? Because a lot of Muslims are probably watching. Mm. Even for myself, I want to know. So when you start praying first, you are hiding in your or hiding in locking the door and praying. Mm. No one seeing you. You're hiding away from the uh, everything, mm. and you are praying. How was the what was the feeling like? Because you, you and Allah, no one seeing you and hiding away from the world. How was it like your sakoon within your heart? What was it like? It's like uh, you've realized that your whole life you've been ignorant of your purpose. You didn't know what your true purpose was and you, know, you, you haven't been fulfilling it and you've been disconnected from, you know, again, your true purpose and why you're here on this earth. You know, when you read the Quran where Allah says, you know, he's not created the mankind or jinn jin kind except for the worship of Allah. SubhanAllah. And when you, when you first start to make the sujood and, you know, in your first prayers and, you know, when you first start to connect with Allah, it's different. I, sometimes it's quite hard to explain. It's like you're... It's like the saying of, uh, you know, you've been, you've been lost in the world, you know, on your own in the desert and you're, you're about to die and you, you find that, that, that life-changing hope that where everything that you thought, you know, was previously before was um, of, uh, you could say, of fear and, uh, again, I'll, it's a bit hard for me to explain. It's like, a, it's like a true awakening. You get a full contentment in your heart. I know it's a personal, if yes, I could ask. Um, uh, it's a personal thing I want to ask you, um, just for benefiting others, um, myself. In those prayers, in the first beginning of the prayers, were you, were you crying? W of were you course. How would you, how often would you cry? The majority of them. SubhanAllah. And the majority of them where I used to cry was actually, was actually not for me. Allahu Akbar. Because I knew for certainty that, you know, that this that Islam was the truth. And then it, it got to a time, you know, that of course, after me, who, who else do I care most about? Parents? My parents. And I thought that, you know, Allah says in the Quran, you know, Prophet Muhammad says, I'm sorry, he said, uh, even if you have a, a mustard seed the size of Iman, you would have paradise. And I knew for certainty that me having this full trust in Allah and practicing his deen um, to as much as my capability, Allah would give me that paradise if I'm sincere. But the two most important people I care about in my life, they don't know about Islam. And uh, all I thought about was that they might, be, they might be going to the opposite destination that I might be going. And this is what truly um, uh, saddens me. Because at first, my, my Iman went up. Naturally, you speak to most reverts, the Iman goes up, they, they change instantly. Some of them, you know, they start dressing differently, you know, they get involved with Islamic circles, but 
you speak to most of them, there'll be a point where they dip. And for me, that dip was because I realised that my parents are not Muslim. And for me, this, for some time, um, it, my iman went down, of course, because I didn't, I just kept thinking about them going to the, you know, to the, to the hellfire because of them not taking the message of Islam. But I knew, because as soon as you start to read more about Islam, you get reassured. And you realise on that day that there's going to be no helpers but Allah. And you won't even, you know, it says in the Quran that even the mother won't care about her child. And, uh, you know, of course, I had to save myself first. But as soon as you get knowledge and you realise that the only person who's going to be responsible for really giving them this, this message is, is me. It's, so everything's been put on my shoulders to give them this message and for me to give them this call to Islam. And, you know, I, do, I make dua as much as I can. You know, I pray to Allah, you know, Allah give them, open their hearts and change their perspectives on life. But for now, this is my personal journey from here. Um, Subhanallah. You know, so like, they must be very pr proud of you, my brother, because the reason is um, who cries for who. You know, and it's like, um, I, especially as a Muslim, your brother and sister, you're watching, you know, in our situation, is like our parents cry for us to pray. That how can I go to pray without my kids? So they actually cry in their, in their situation and everything. Allah, make my kids pray. In his situation, it's different, subhanAllah. The child is crying for the parents to be, go to paradise. And what's better place than paradise? Or what's better place than pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So for us, if, if our young people, I mean, subhanAllah, do we cry for our parents? You know, we are lucky to have Islam as a blessed, uh, we're born as a Muslims. But what do we have? To show to those people who want to become Muslim, you know, Islam is the fastest moving religion in the world. And this brother here, subhanAllah, no one invited him, but he, Allah, he found a way. Or oh, Allah found him a way, found him excuse, and subhanAllah. And, and how many of us in our suju that we cry for others? You know, it's important. Um, my brother, may Allah bless you and may Allah bless your family. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds really interesting family. I'd love to meet your parents. Same. And may Allah accept your dua and your cry and everything. And no. everything in this, you, you get return. Allahu Akbar. Mm. It's amazing. Um, like you said before, you, you studied Quran and everything else. But you also, um, uh, can I ask you another personal thing? That you're <laughs> married to a, a Muslim sister. And, 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 yeah. and she's Bangladeshi, right? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Yeah. Welcome to our uh, <laughs> Bangladeshi <laughs> um, way of life. How was it, what was it like for you? Another, another dif different... Yeah, it's uh, another... Uh, the event in my life, which was uh, Subhanallah, how was it for you? Um, of course, there was because there are lots, lots of brothers and sisters. The mm. reason I asked you that because a lot of brothers and sisters are revered brothers and sisters are marry, marrying Muslim sisters, so they're from different different uh, um, culture and the countries. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of our sisters, mashallah, marrying uh, revered brothers. So it's a good thing, mm. and it's, it's, it's in Islam you you should do that. Mm. You know, it shouldn't be coloured. No, of course. You know, there's no racism in Islam. And mm. if we are proper, if we are good Muslims, we need to break that down. Mm. So, Alhamdulillah, we, I think we are lucky to have you in, in, in our uh, Bangladeshi uh, um, way of... And then you show, I'm sure you will bring a change. Or you, seeing you, others would think they can trust others. That's the thing. You want to give your daughters to someone you trust. No, of course. And yeah. Alhamdulillah, I think you're feeling that. So, tell me how your journey through that one. I know it's, it's not a um, <laughs> journey, but how was it for you, culturally? Um, well, I knew at first that you know the, a lot of the um, if you you know if a lot of the the cultures in the world, especially those in the Indian subcontinent, they're not very not used to marrying outside you know outside the community, and I knew this, and um, so I had to even outside the town, brother. <laughs> even outside the town. That's yeah, the yeah, I, yeah, I know that. Of course, that, yeah. that's another question that's usually asked yeah. on the CV, isn't it? Um, but. Um, I thought to myself that, you know, this individual, I wanted to marry them for the sake of, for the sake of Allah. And of course, throughout that, I, I wanted to do it in a way which was not, of course, imposing on, on the culture and, you know, causing too much of a problem for, for them on their side. But of course, I had to say them what Islam is Islam. SubhanAllah. You know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he completed the deen for us. Anything afterwards, there's no additions. So what, what, so what did you learn from them? Okay, I know you learned lots of different <laughs> styles of foods and everything. Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. What did you yeah. learn? Do you think 
in our culture because you mm. are actually you living with us mm. now in, in, in the Bangladeshi mm. home. Do you think our culture and Islamic struggles, I mean our clashes? Um, I, can't, I can't talk for the majority because I haven't you know, engaged okay. everyone, just, but just for some that I've seen, uh, sometimes yeah. Um, there can be some times where the, the culture is taking preference of, of the religion. Um, for example, a common one where a lot of the, the friends I know, which of course are from the Bangladeshi background, um, is that um, usually when they engage for marriage, the first question is not be really... Be careful what you say, then my <laughs> <laughs> your friends anymore. It's not, it's not usually in regards to... Um, the, the, the weddings. They're, they're practicing. Subhanallah, look at the weddings. It's uh, not the, Islamic. The, the weddings, of course. Look at the right. culture of whom? It's not, it's not, uh, uh, um, mm. it's not Islamic. Mm. Um, even, even when you go to the mosque, you'll find lots of culture coming into it mm. than, uh, than Islam. Does it yeah. affect, how do you feel? Does it affect you? I think coming from a perspective where I was in another culture myself coming into Islam, I'm a bit more... Um, I'm not too, too critical and harsh because I know that sometimes these things are, okay. you know, are fed down generation after generation. Some people just take it openly without actually questioning. Uh, of course, Allah says in the Quran, you shouldn't just follow your forefathers blindly. You need to you get knowledge as well. Knowledge is important in Islam. But I knew that some people, you know, they, they, they may not know. They might be ignorant of knowledge and they might not know what, you know, what Islam is and what culture is. They might just, you know, they get it, think of it as a mix. Um, but of course, I thought that for me coming from an outside perspective, I had to sort of Again, my responsibility is on me to sort of break this, this, uh, this mix and sort of make a differentiation between the two. And alhamdulillah, I think in, especially in the household that I'm in, you know, um, at first there were some questions, naturally this came. Um, alhamdulillah, after, after some time... Um, Did they have to adapt or you had to adapt them? Both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was used to a household, okay. you know, where it was You know what, uh, I, 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 last time I was talking to you, actually, yeah. I, I've, I've learned something from you, mm. you know. I remember when you were talking about your father-in-law, you said mm. Abu, you called him, yeah. you called him Abu. Mm. And that amazed me, honestly, honestly amazed me, honestly. Um, that's, that word was, is only can be used that someone you really, really respect and love. Mm. You know, you can't call someone Abu for, for show and safety. Mm. And you guys got come together to pray, you go out to the prayer, and mm -hmm. if he wants to do something, he talks to you and you talk to them. Mm -hmm. But this, this trust, and that bonding in that family, mm. subhanAllah, is amazing. Honestly, it's, it's, it's really amazing. So mm. I think we can learn something from that family that we, even if you're outsider, the bonding comes from Islam mm. and the truth. Of course, yeah. And if you fulfill your responsibility, it doesn't matter. Mm. Because it works. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah, it works. Um, because I want to ask you something. We don't have much time, but I'm going to yeah. ask, because you, st you made your judgment, on an Islam by reading Quran. Yeah. So if I could ask you, why do you think, if, if one of your friends ask you, that why do you think the Quran is the word of Allah, how would you describe it? Why do you think, to, if they ask you? Many reasons. I think, again, the foundation is the principle of, of the Creator. As soon as you know about the Creator, um, for example, Allah says in the Quran clearly about the Creator, which is, you know, He's unlike His creation. Um, that he's the all wise, the all just. And as soon as you start to get a bigger picture about the Creator, as Allah says in the Quran about his Asma wa Sifat, and then y you can use that as a criteria to differentiate the falsehood from the truth. For example, if you know naturally in your heart that, you know, uh, that the Creator doesn't, you know, uh, doesn't beget any children, you know, as Allah says in the Quran, then clearly you can differentiate the falsehood you know, like Christianity in Judaism, it was very, you could say, using this perspective on the Creator and Allah's oneness, and true, you know, Tawheed or monotheism, you can use this as a tool or criteria to remove the, fo the false gods away from the, the true um, understanding of Islam. And as soon as you know that, because I, I had full trust in my heart that the Creator sent truth on this earth. This was my first position. I had to find it. And as soon as you read the Quran, you get certainty. Allah. Allah. Many people said that, honestly, even if they're not Muslim, but mm. they want to say, when I read these things, it makes me, I get, I get amazing feelings. Mm. It's like uh, I'm, I'm, someone's talking to me. Mm. Mm. And one of the, one of the uh, questions people usually ask, why is Quran, it doesn't go in, in a rhythm, like it talks about something here, and then it goes jump to something else mm. and stuff like that. Mm. The scholars say, look, he's, because he's talking to you. Mm. He's talking to you. So he's giving you everything you need. Mm. You know, if, he, if, he, if this goes in the line, like a storyline, 
maybe you got a problem at the end, mm. not at the beginning. <laughs> so what happens is he brings you and he knows what you need and he gives it to you. Mm. So we only have a few moments left. Mm. Um, how do you, I know you do Dawah work, it's very straight Dawah, mashallah. Mm. You took Islam and you're actually spreading Islam and many people, mashallah, done shahada through you as well, alhamdulillah. Mm. Um, what would you say to our Muslim brothers and sisters that are watching you now within, within one minute mm. to, for Dawah work? What, what would you say to them? Why is it so important to do that? Well, we can I would say it's, more, it's very important is because, again, talking from my perspective that, you know, there was, there was not really anyone in, that came to me in my life that directly invited me to Islam. And if you really know the value of your religion, if you value it with certainty and you know that it's 100% the truth with, with certainty, you would want that for other people. As Allah says in the Quran, you need to love your brothers and sisters for you love for yourself. SubhanAllah, that's amazing uh, where you're finishing off. Jazakumullah yeah. khair for your time mm -hmm. and um, I hope I wasn't really harsh when you talking <laughs> about all these things. I know I didn't tell you the questions before but mm -hmm. I wanted to come out from yourself and that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure, dear brothers and sisters, uh, I'm sure you enjoyed it. I'm sure a lot of you cried for the way he actually bring out the love of him and his parents and the family and the, the way he adopted to a, a culture of we live in, inshallah. Uh, I didn't have much time to ask him about his uh, uh, his fish and mass and how we learn how to eat curry with us. So amazing. Um, mm. I would ask brothers and sisters, please talk to your kids and show them the beauty of Islam. Let them to read Quran in the meaning they understand, not just Arabic because they don't understand Arabic. Get them to read in their own language they understand, in English, Bengali, whatever. And inshallah, they will appreciate the Creator and they will know the purpose of life. There is nothing we see without a purpose. So what's our purpose? It's important to know and where we're going after with this film. So I hope Allah accepts our effort and I hope uh, and accepts our, everybody's uh, ibadah, inshallah, and let's hope we all live together in the paradise as well. So if we said anything wrong, please do forgive us and I hope to see you again, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.